Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the simplest possible authentication system for a Flask app. And this is using uh, HTTP basic authentication. So this is what it looks like. If I go to my page here, I get this form that pops up and this is from the browser. So I didn't create this form myself. This is something that's built into every single browser. And I'll show you in this video how to get this to pop up. I'll put in my username and password. And if I type it correctly, it would work. So the last one, I didn't type in the password correctly. Now the password is correct. I hit sign in and it takes me to my protected pages. So like I said, this is a very simple authentication system. So if you're looking for something simple for your app and you don't wanna build like a full auth system for your app, I think this video will help you. And if you need any further help implementing this, I do have a one-on-one -on -one coaching service. So you can go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching, or you can go to the link in the description below. You can learn more about my coaching program and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. I can talk to you on a video call and I can help you implement this or anything else that you need for your Flask app. So with that said, let's get into creating this example here so you can use basic auth in your Flask apps. Okay, so to get started, let me show you what I have already. I have a Flask app set up in this folder called basic auth. In the folder, I have a file called dunder init. I have the create app function and I have a single route that returns hello world. And you can see that here. I have a Flask env file that says basic auth is the Flask app and debug mode is on. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to display the login form. And the way this works is if the browser sees a certain header in the response, it will display the login form. So it's up to me to pass that header to the response so the browser can see it. So normally when you return something from a Flask route, like hello world or like a template or a dictionary that's going to be serialized to JSON, it doesn't pass any extra headers other than the standard ones. So if you wanna pass more headers, what you have to do is you have to make your own response. So to do that, you can import a function from Flask called make response. And what you can do is you can simply pass your response information to make response like this. So when I update it to be this, the page is exactly the same because I'm just passing this HTML to make response. But the benefit to using make response is I can also pass other things to it. So for example, I could pass a status code. I could pass 401, for example, and that's basically the access denied status code. And then I can pass some headers. So the third argument, if I pass a dictionary, those will be passed to the headers for the response. So to generate the login form, I have to pass in a certain header. And that header is called www-authenticate. And then the value for that header is going to be basic realm equals, and then you need double quotes here, and it's going to be some text that you want to appear. I'm just going to say login uh, required for my text. So now if I run this and I go back, the login form pops up. And that's simply because I'm passing that www authenticate header to the response. And the browser picks that up and it displays the form. So normally you wouldn't have it like this where you have hello world as the response. This actually should be for the access denied case. So I'll put that here. And now when I uh, refresh and hit cancel, it says access denied. So that basically means that I didn't pass the login information and it's showing me the page that uh, gets generated when you don't have any credentials, in this case, access denied, and also uses the 401 error code. So now that I have that, now that I have the form, I want to be able to get the username and password so I can check them against some values to make sure that they're valid. So to do that, I need to import requests from Flask. And then inside of index here, I can have an if statement and I can say if request.authorization so if that exists, that means that there are username and password credentials in the requests. And then I can check the actual credentials. So I can say if request authorization and request authorization dot username. And let's say this is equal to user. And then same thing for password. So request dot authorization dot password is equal to let's say pass. So if that if statement is true, then I'll just return hello world again. And if it's false, it will fall down to this return statement and just generate the login form again so they can try to log in again. So let's give that a shot. I'll reload and I'll type in a wrong one first. So just you for username and pass and we see it regenerates the form. And now we see it loads with the correct credentials for a user and pass. 
So this works pretty well for one route, but imagine if I had multiple routes and I wanted the same uh, authentication on each route, I'd have to write this code over and over again for each one. And that's not something that you wanna do because it's just extra code. So what I can do is I can create a decorator for this. So what I'll do is I'll create a new file called utils.py. And in here, I'll import that make response and requests again. And then I'll define the decorator. So I'm going to name this decorator auth underscore required. It's going to take in a function because remember a decorator is simply a function that takes in a function. I do need to import something from Python. So from func tools, which is part of the Python standard library, I'm going to import something called wraps. And basically what this does with the decorator is it kind of takes the information from the function being decorated and passes it inside of here. If I didn't do this, then I'd get like a weird error with Flask. So just know that this wraps is necessary. So wraps F. And then I can define the actual function that's going to run inside of the decorator. So I'll just call this uh, decorated. It's going to take in arguments and keyword arguments just in case they're there. And then this is where I can perform the logic. So this if statement, this if request out authorization and so on. So because request out authorization is kind of long, I'm going to put it in a variable here. So I'll say request out authorization. And then I can say if auth, which is equivalent to if request out authorization and auth dot username equals, let's say user one and auth dot password is equal to pass. Then I can just simply return the function that's being decorated, which is the view function under the route. So in this case, it would be like index. So return F, and then I could pass the arguments to it if they were there uh, when I pass them to the decorator. And then if that doesn't work, then the logic is the same where I have this access denied. So I can just take this one, copy it, and I can put it here. So this logic is exactly the same. And then finally here, I just need to return the decorated here. And now, instead of having the if statement here and like this, I can import that decorator. So from utils, import auth required. And first, let me show you that the page is loading with no auth here. Now, if I take the auth required and put it between the routes and the function, using the at symbol. If I load this now, it pops up the username and password. I can put user pass, that doesn't work because I change it to user one and pass, and now it works. And of course, if I wanted to have multiple routes, let's say home, I can do the same thing, auth required, and then we'll return like home here, okay? So if I go to slash home, it still works. And the reason why the form doesn't pop up again is because it will remember the values. Uh, so every time it hits this, the, the username and password are saved there in the session. And as long as the browser is open, it will continue. If you close the browser and reopen it, then you have to put in their credentials again. If I change this back to user, now it's not correct. So when I go to like home, it prompts me to add the username and password again. So user pass and it works again and it works on the index. Finally, I want to put the user and password in the configuration so I don't have to like type them here. So what I can do is I can import current app from Flask. So current underscore app. And instead of user here, I'll do current app dot config. And then let's say site user. And then I'll do the same thing for the password. And this will be site pass. Okay. So now I need to get these values into this config here. And what I can do is I can go to uh, .env. I already have them here for uh, username and password. The username is just username and the password is password. And I need to prefix these with flask underscore. So when I go to dunder init, I can load those. I can do app.config.from prefix env. And it will load those values from the .env. I do have python.env installed. So what it does is it will take all the values in my .env file and load them into the environment for me. So now I've changed it to username and password. So I have to put in their credentials again, but I'll type username, password here, and it works. So I like this approach because there is no corresponding registration form. So to me, it makes sense to have like one username and password 
But if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to have like a database set up where you have multiple users and they all have their own password, then you can do the same thing. You just modify this code inside of the decorated. You query the database for the username that they inserted into the form. Uh, if it exists, you check the password against the password that they inserted. If it all matches, then you can return the function here. If it doesn't match, then you can return like this access denied um, along with the, uh, the header again to authenticate so they can try again with the username and password. And that approach really works well if you as the admin user will go in and add the users and passwords yourself into the database, as opposed to there being some kind of registration form where your users add it themselves. But like I said, I like this approach with the configuration because it's the simplest. So if you're looking for a really simple authentication system, I think this will work for you. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.